Mr. Majeski's Anatomy 32 class uh, from the textbook Principles of Human Anatomy, 12th edition. We chapters one, parts 1.1 through 1.3. So in this class, we will be investigating anatomy. And if you look at the word anatomy, you see that it's composed of two parts, ana, which means up, and tomi, which is process of cutting. So you put that together, it is the process of cutting up something. And for this class, it's human anatomy, so it's the process of cutting up human body. And this makes sense, since historically, the process involved people cutting up human bodies. Uh, this was illegal, so it involved the collaboration between grave robbers and the scientists who were interested in this work. Fortunately, nowadays, we have legal ways of getting human bodies and undergoing these investigations as well as technology that allows us to investigate the human body without actually having to cut it up. The official definition is the study of structure and the relationships among structures of the body. So basically, it's looking at the various parts of the body. The anatomy is also uh, often associated with physiology, which is studying the functions of the various structures of the body. So you can kind of understand how these two go hand in hand. So even though we will focus primarily on human anatomy, uh, there will also be some covering of human physiology. And then when you go on to take the human physiology class, you'll go into much more detail. So some sub-disciplines of anatomy uh, include things like gross anatomy, which means pretty much anything you can see with your own eyes, and therefore nothing that's microscopic or smaller. There's histology, which is a study of tissues. In this case, you would need a microscope to understand the various tissues of the body. There's also service anatomy, which is pretty much the anatomy uh, that the family physician or primary care physician would be investigating through visualization. That's what you can see with your eye. And palpation, which is what you can touch. There's also radiographic anatomy, which is the anatomy that you can see through x-rays and pathological anatomy, which is instead of studying what a healthy body looks like, it's studying what a diseased body looks like so that you can better diagnose a person with said disease. And there are some other terms and disciplines of anatomy that you can find in Table 1.1. Remember, the lecture does not always cover absolutely every single term that you see uh, in the textbook, but you still are responsible for those terms. So when we look at the levels of structure and how the human body is organized, we start off, could start off at the chemical level with the atoms and the molecules such as DNA and uh, lipids that make up the fats and carbohydrates that make up other parts of the body. From here, you can go up to cellular level of organization. And the cells are important because they are considered the fundamental unit of living things. So nothing smaller than a cell is considered alive. From here, you go to the tissue level. At the tissue level, you are now looking at groups of similar cells working together for a common purpose. Above that is the organ level. The organ is where you have two or more different tissues that are working together, again, for a common purpose. So in this case, you can see now we are talking about the stomach. And then finally, the system level, which is where various organs and glands work together for a big overarching purpose. So in this case, we're looking at the digestive system and the various components of that. And then at the very end, of course, is the organismal level, the level of the person in this case. So in our textbook, the body systems are broken down into 11 types of systems. The integumentary system, which is basically the skin and the tissue under the skin. The skeletal system, the bones. The muscular system, that's skeletal muscles, the muscles that involve using the bones to provide movement. The cardiovascular system, that of the heart and the blood vessels. The lymphatic system which also involves the movement of fluids and is often tightly associated with the immune system, the nervous system, 
the endocrine, which is the glands that cause various responses in our bodies, the respiratory system for breathing, the digestive system for bringing in nutrients into the body, the urinary system for getting rid of wastes produced by the cells, and of course the reproductive system necessary for any species to continue. And this is all found in Table 1.2. You will need to know the main players of these different systems and the fun main functions of these systems. So, as I said earlier, the cell is the fundamental unit of life. And you find that there are a particular set of processes that you will see at the cellular level and also at the to total or organismal level. Uh, the first among these listed is the metabolism. The metabolism is all chemical processes occurring in that cell or in that organism. And this includes both the breaking down of materials and the building up of materials. Uh, number two is the responsiveness. This is the ability of the living thing to detect what's occurring both in its environment around it and what's occurring inside its body and to respond to that stimulus. So for instance, touching a pointy object will cause you to notice that by pain and then your response will be to jerk your hand away. Next is movement. This is either the movement of the whole body or it can be movement all the way down to the subcellular level. So it can be talking about that movement of your hand when you touch that pointy object or it could be just talking about uh, mitochondria inside your cell moving around naturally. Next is growth. Growth can occur both primarily as an increase in the body size. If we're talking about an entire organism. This can occur through the production of more cells. This can occur through the increase in size of those cells. And it can also occur by an increase in the materials surrounding the cells. Next is differentiation. This is basically going from stem cells to specialized cells. We all started off as one single fertilized egg and we then had that cell divide again and again and again and as this division, this growth occurred, those cells began to specialize into things like muscle cells and nervous cells and so forth. And then, of course, reproduction. Reproduction can occur on the cellular level, the production of new cells, all the way up to the reproduction and production of a new organism, which is needed to continue the species. Thank you. I hope this brief lecture was of assistance.